Hey guys, before we get to the video, please click that subscribe button. Hey guys, Joshua Griffin here serving the Middle Peninsula and the Northern Neck of Virginia. And I want to do a video on the Bosch heat pumps and the dip switches that are on them and what they do and all of that. So right now we're going to start out with this video. We're going to talk about the Bosch 1.0 line. It's the 18 seer line. I've kind of got a little little guide here to to walk us through this and so basically it breaks it down into two separate banks of dip switches if you will uh, when I say banks I'm talking about you know actual little banks is, is what I call them uh, so it's got you know if it's if it's got four dip switches I call that a, you know it's a bank of four dip switches uh, and you know, and so SW4, if you find that on the board, it's got four dip switches and the first two, it says not used. I'm not sure if they do control anything, but Bosch has pretty much said they're not used. Don't mess with them. And so they're usually probably off. So just leave those off. The second two, we've got the dip switch three is the adaptive capacity output. And if you were to turn it on or up, that would disable it, okay? So if you leave it off, it's enabled. And the book says while in the off position and it's enabled, it allows for the coil and condenser target temperature to drift plus or minus four degrees Fahrenheit based on previous hour of operation and attempt to optimize runtime. So basically, I, I think what it's saying is it's learning from the pe previous hour how long you know it's taking it to, to reach the temperature and, and so on. And so it, it says it's, it's drifting four degrees. And it says reason to disable in zoning applications, but only as needed as a result of customer expectations and or performance. So they're saying that really the only time you want to turn this dip switch up on or to or to disable the adaptive capacity output is, you know, if, if you have a zoning system, you have multiple zones, you have dampers that open and close and thermostats in different locations, and, you know, a fully zoning system, then you might turn this off if you're having issues. The four, the, the the next dip switch is dip switch four, and that one I did a video on this. I uh, want to touch on it again, and that is uh, dip switch four on the bank of four dip switches. This one is called the accelerated cooling slash heating or normal. And you know, don't tell Bosch this, but I will tell you that we at Griffin Air, because of our climate, because of some of the issues that we have in our region, we turn this switch on more times than we leave it off. It's a, it's a more accelerated, more aggressive way of cooling, but you know, it's it helps with humidity and things like that. So the book says reduces target coil temperature and cooling to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. I think in normal operation, it's 42. So it's dropping that down to 37 and it increases the target coil temperature and heating to 114 degrees Fahrenheit. Recommended to be used only as needed as a result of customer expectations and or performance. So again, that's probably one that, you know, I break that rule uh, for us. But you know, if you're in a drier climate, you probably wanna, you know, take advantage of the normal operation. It's a little more efficient. Moving on, there's also a bank of two dip switches on the board, and it, the the manual calls that SW5. So if you're looking at the schematics, it's going to call it SW5. So dip switch number one on that bank of two, it says it functions, allows for the equipment to enter defrost sooner than normal used in northern cool climates where high humidity is common. So that's pretty unique. Uh, we don't normally mess with that uh, in our, here in Virginia. But if you live in a northern climate, cooler climate, and it's a higher humidity climate, so that's pretty unique. Uh, that's not 
that's that's not to say just because you live in a cooler climate or just because you live in a high humidity location that you need to mess with this. So if you were to flip it on, it just says that operating time is reduced by 10%. If it's off, it's normal. And that's got to do with how quickly it's gonna enter that defrost mode. And the second dip switch looks like it's kind of similar to that. And it, it actually says only used in cooler climates with high humidity. And that one, again, this is dip switch two on the on the bank of two dip switches. They, it calls it SW5 in the schematics. And so that second dip switch says it the function allows for defrost cycle to be extended from eight minutes to nine minutes and also used in cooler climates where high humidity is common. So again, you don't wanna mess with those unless you're in a cooler climate with higher humidity, pretty unique. There's only specific areas I would say in the US that you would even wanna fool with that, that bank of two dip switches. So that's pretty much it as far as the dip switches. I'm gonna do a separate video on the 1.0 line uh, talking about the fault codes and using the check button on the board. You know, I hope that helps. The dip switches are, are what they are. Uh, they're there for a reason. And uh, if your system's working great, you probably shouldn't mess with them. You definitely don't wanna mess with them unless you're a pro. So I, most of the videos I do are geared more towards homeowners and you know trying to explain some of the things that you know are not always explained very well in our, our industry. But you know I thought I'd do a video for you guys if you are doing a Bosch heat pump and you're looking at the dip switches, what they do and whether or not you should be messing with them. If you're in our coverage area, uh, if you're in Griffin Air's coverage area, Northern Neck or Middle Peninsula of Virginia, give us a call. We'd love to earn your business. And if you are not in our coverage area and you are in the market for a new heating and air system, you got to check out my new website. It's called newhvacguide.com. I'll put a link to it down in the comments. You got to check out that website before you spend thousands. I've got all kinds of information on there. It's basically written like a book and... You know, I've got a page on there even called no-nos, just things to stay away from. And a lot of the stuff that we're putting on that website, it's stuff that HVAC contractors and manufacturers don't even want you to know if you're a homeowner. So check that out and we appreciate it. Please subscribe.